I was watching a YouTube video recently and I was very impressed with the skill of the presenter as he used the pen tool to make a very sophisticated selection. Now I've been using Photoshop for quite a long time, well over 20 years, and while I've used and demonstrated the pen tool, I never quite mastered making those curves like the demonstrator I was watching. So I decided I'd take another look at the pen tool by cutting out this car. But I soon found myself getting frustrated. Now I'm sure that if I stuck with it long enough, I would get much better at using it. But then I came to my senses. I already have a technique I've used for years, and it has no disadvantages over the pen tool, especially in the time required. My technique is no less accurate than the pen tool and it offers the same flexibility while creating it. Well this is what image editing is all about. There are multiple ways to do most things. The trick really is to find one that suits you and stick with it because then you tend to get better at it. Um, you shouldn't do what I did for a moment where I already had a good technique and I went searching for the holy grail when I'd already discovered it. If you've watched other videos of mine there is a chance you may have seen this technique used before but it is great for small projects and also the big ones like this. So how long did it take me to mask around the outer edges of this car, which is 90% of the work? Well, I timed myself 6 minutes. Once you have your car floating on its own transparent background, then you can experiment by introducing any background you can dream up. And there are all sorts of ways you can do that. Save your images in layers for as long as you can because I produced this image which I was happy with but when I looked at it a couple of days later I decided that I needed to change one or two things. Well it's easy when you've got all the components of it in layers. I had an idea, I tried it, and it worked much better than my previous version. Here's another image which uses all of the same techniques. I've lived in Australia almost nine years, and I did this some time before I left. So this image here could be getting on close to 15 years old. So there's a technique that I've been using for 15 years and it still delivers the goods. So let's make a start by opening the image up into Camera Raw. I'm going to be working with a smart object so for the moment I think all I'm going to do is to go to my lens corrections and I'm just going to tick to remove chromatic aberration and to enable lens profile. I'm not going to make any other changes for the moment because I'm not sure yet whether I want to lighten or darken the subject to help me go around the outer edge. I think most of this car is going to be easily visible given the colour but as we're working around the shadow at the bottom then perhaps we could raise the exposure because we can do that with a smart object to make sure we pick up all of the edges that are lying in shadow underneath. So for the moment, all I really want to do is to open this up into Photoshop. As soon as it appears on screen, I'm going to go straight to the layers and apply a layer mask. Now I'll pop the layers out on screen, I think, just for a moment. When I think about photographing cars, the vast majority of the photographs I've got are at car shows where the car is standing on grass. Now that can give us a little bit of a difficulty when we come to cutting it out 
because if the grass is particularly long, it can encroach up the tyre and in some instances actually break into the rim. That can give us a little bit of a problem to sort that out once we've made the cutout because of the shape and angle of the wheels and tyres. The other thing we notice is quite a bit of green will be reflected up into the bright work on the car. Well here we've got something similar, we've got quite a bit of blue into the bright work of the car. So one of the things I could have said when we were in Camera Raw and the smart object enables me to go back and correct this is to double click that thumbnail, go back into Camera Raw and what I can do is go to my hue, saturation and luminance, choose the saturation and take away the blue. I can take it all away or I can take some away but you can see it's actually improved the bright work and it's not going to impact anywhere else on the car we're about to cut out. So there's another option that you can consider and having that smart object gives us the freedom. However, back to the cutout, let me reselect my mask. So the techniques we're going to use here is firstly to enlarge the car to at least 300%. Now if I pick up my zoom tool and I just click a few times, I'm using my space bar to click and drag because we'll start somewhere up there. You can see I'm up to 400% there, maybe that's a little bit too much but never say never, there may be sometimes when you need slightly less enlargement, sometimes when you need more. One of the other things which could be quite useful for this, if you were drawing on a piece of paper, sometimes it's very convenient to turn the paper a little bit. Well, we have the same sort of thing when we're trying to make a selection or a cutout. So one of the options we do have, it's grouped with the hand tool, is the rotate view tool. So if we select that, we can click and rotate the image to get it at a better angle to make the movements we have to make, which I'll demonstrate in a second or two, to get around the edge of this car really effectively. And any time we want to reset it, we can just double click and it's reset back. It's quite useful. So the trick to this technique is to enlarge your image to 300 or 400 percent, to apply a layer mask, to orientate your image to a comfortable position, select black as your foreground colour and a standard soft basic brush. I'm going to set my size at about 6, I think that's going to be big enough to go around the outer edge of the car. Now the technique is this, we click and you can see the little soft hole appears and we're looking at that blue and white checkerboard beneath which tells us that that is transparent. We then move a distance away, hold the shift key and click again. So you can see what we're doing, we are painting in straight lines by just holding that shift key. Now you may be thinking, well, where's the sense in that because we're going to start with a long sweeping curve. Well, we go shorter steps on curves, longer steps on the straight edges. Let me reset my mask by flooding that with white and I'll demonstrate by starting right on the edge of that little tree sticking in there but we'll start at that position. Now because I recorded my introduction at the beginning of this video, after I completed the work, I was able to say with some confidence that the outline around this car, which is 90% of the cutout, took me six minutes. Okay, I'm used to doing this, and even if we doubled it up or even trebled it up, to make it 18 or maybe even four times. Supposing it took 24 minutes to cut out this car, that wouldn't be a long time to get a cut out of a vehicle like this to the standard that you could print it almost as large as you wanted. So watch the technique and I'll start here, but I'm gonna bite into the car just a pixel or two, not much, but just about a little bit like that. Remember we're working on a mask, so there's no risk here. Short distance, click, short distance, click, click, click. 
click, click, click. Now you'll appreciate that I'm working here while talking and if I wasn't talking I would be concentrating a little better but I think you'll get a pretty good gist of how this works keeping that shift key held all the time click 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 I'm not going to go around and take up the whole six minutes although even on a video like this I possibly could but you can see we get to long straight edges there and I was quite confident to make bigger steps when I get here I'm going to move up and around this I'm using the spacebar to move the image around but now I can go right up that aerial because these are the things that are great to leave in because they make the cutout much more believable and we can go back down the other side in one or two steps and you can at times it may be necessary to make the brush slightly bigger or smaller in some of these locations but there you see the technique is not difficult at all click click shorter steps now to go around a corner click 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 I'm looking for any curves let's come down to a place where there's more curves let's look at the front and the grill because we've got an odd shape so let me pick up at this point holding the shift key again click 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 smaller steps all the way around but when I get here I'm just going to step out a little bit and down step out a little bit very easy to do but you could make your brush a little smaller here if you wanted to but there you can see very easy and then we continue around the outer edge of the car now I'm going to stop at this point and we're going to look at some of the shadows Now sometimes when you're doing this work it's not a bad thing to take the shadow with the car and actually cut it out because then it really does look very authentic. I'm going to choose to remove the shadow here so around the near side of the car I don't have any problems at all seeing the edge but around here I, I'm having some difficulty so this was where we could go back into our camera raw and we could just push up the exposure or even the shadows or a bit of both open this image back up into Photoshop remember we can make these changes without any risk to the quality but there it does allow me to see where the underbody comes in so I could go back to my mask back to my brush back to my 300% now let me just finish off this little demonstration with this section so again holding the shift key short step short step short step you'll be surprised how quick you get a feel for this and like I've said probably a number of times don't worry if it goes a bit wrong if we get something wrong and we don't spot it straight away if you spot it straight away you do a control Z if you don't spot it straight away and you come back later you switch to white and you've got a way of repairing the problem so back to that little bit back to the red up to there so we now know that that's where the shadow goes across and we can see the edge of the tire a lot better and we could continue around the outer edge it's a pretty simple process and I suppose the other benefit of using this process is that we can stop at any time and save this as a project so if it is going to take you 12 or 20 minutes to do this you don't have to sit and do it all in one go Now if you look up at the top left at the tab you can see I've actually called this part of my project six minutes because that's how long it took me to create this actual outline of the car which as I said earlier on is about 90% of the work. Next stage then is to look at the mask. Hold the Alt key and click the mask. There we get to see the outline we've made. So what we need to do now is mask everything outside of that now that's going to be pretty quick and easy but we do need to make a selection first let's just click into that area because when we make a selection it's picked up instantly but when we zoom in really tight to the line we can see we need to come in a few pixels I would suggest one two three probably about four pixels but you can just guess this and if you get it wrong just change it 
go to select modify what we're doing is expanding the selection so it moves into the black line a bit more four pixels was my guess that's just about perfect I'll hit control zero so what we can do now is to flood that selection with color and we're not going to leave any halos around the outer edge black is my foreground color so alt backspace will do that control D will remove the selection and if I turn my car back on we get to see it floating on a transparent background for the first time now we would have just a little more work to do here if we zoom in we've got the windows to do but we're only going to pick out this part of the window around here those two sections we've got the rear window but it's just that bit and that bit but the techniques and of course the side window but the techniques are exactly the same that I've just demonstrated now with the windows done using the same technique there you can see them here I need to select my magic wand make sure you've got the add one selection to another option checked at the top of the screen see the little plus so we can add one into each of them take another look at the edge just to make sure because I think I used a slightly smaller brush here so I think we only need to expand by probably about one pixel here let's try it select modify expand one pixel yep I think that's going to do just fine I'm going to hit control zero then I'm going to flood those selections with alt backspace control D will remove the selection there we can see the cutout fully made now if you haven't already done so this is the time to save your work as an ongoing project I've just called this red car project one I have still got the advantage of my smart object so now I really need to make a decision on if I'm happy with the density of the car I don't think it's too bad at all but we'll take a quick look because we may want to add a little bit of clarity maybe a little touch of vibrance make a bit more of the color but I don't think we need very much more look at the spread of the histogram up there it's just about perfect really so I think I'm happy with the car as it is so now we've got to think about what sort of background we're going to put the car on top of and I think to some degree I would argue that this is probably the trickier part to get something which looks attractive so one tip I'm going to make probably again and again is keep your image in layers as long as possible what I need to consider now is how I'm going to present it and there's lots of different ways to do this so let's take a look at just one or two techniques because I feel we could spend an hour or more just trying all different backgrounds and we'd probably get a number of different images which were all pretty good I think I'm going to start by considering a crop if I'm going to make a background then I want my image to be the size that I actually want to produce it at so with my crop tool selected I could if I wanted to just do a little bit of cropping here just to tidy up maybe the composition a bit we're all going to choose something a little different but if I'm going to start making a background then I'd rather like to do that on the background at the size I'm going to use it so let's say we're happy with that looks okay to me hit the tick on the options bar and we can begin from this point so let's start by adding a new blank layer by going to the bottom right of the layers creating it and dragging it to the bottom of the stack so what do we use here one of the techniques I've used a number of times is to use a color clone from the car so let's try it first pick up the eyedropper tool select a nice rich red from the door of the car and we can flood that background with alt backspace now we don't have to live with our first choice of course we can go back to the bottom of the toolbox click the color picker on the red we can use the red but we could choose to darken it a bit so we could come down a bit 
or over a bit to weaken the red. We've got lots of different choices, then we can Alt Backspace and reflood the red. I'll hit Ctrl Z for a moment. Another alternative is the hue and saturation and levels. Let's take levels first. We could go to Image Adjustment Levels and we could make an adjustment to the background in this fashion. But I think my favourite is the hue and saturation. Same place, Image Adjustment Hue and Saturation because what I can do here with the hue is to move across and see what works best with the red car. And some of these don't look very attractive. Blue's beginning to look nice. Now I need to come up the other end. See, I mean, that's beginning to look pretty impressive, isn't it? So I think here we've either got to have a neutral grey, a white, which I don't fancy too much, or maybe a blue. But even now, I can pick the blue, and if I don't want it to clash too much with the car, I could take some of the saturation off that blue, so we get something which is a little bit more supportive. There's just a couple of ideas on how we can start the process. So let's double click layer 1 and call this our background. It's not the same background we see when we first open an image, of course, but it's our blue background. I'm going to create a new layer above this. In fact, I'm going to create two. For this one I'm going to call bot grad and this one top grad because what I'd like to do here is to put a bit of a gradient on the bottom and the top of the background. To do that I'm just going to drop the zoom factor down a little bit. I'm going to switch to black as my foreground color but I want my gradient tool from the middle of the toolbox and from the options at the top of the screen I want this option which is linear gradient and from here I want the foreground to transparent option. So now I've got the opportunity to create a gradient at the bottom and where I start and end the gradient will depend on how bold it is. So I'm just going to test the water so to speak and that doesn't look too bad but I'm going to select the top grad to put the top grad on. I'm going to start a little bit outside and just make it a little weaker. But I've got the opportunity by having them on different layers to be able to adjust the opacity. So I can fiddle with these to my heart's content until I get just the effect I want. If I wanted a much stronger effect, then of course I could do so by starting the gradient further up into the picture space. What we also need though, we need a shadow under the car. To do that, I'm going to make yet another layer and I'll call this shadow. To mark the shadow out, I'm just going to do this manually. Let me just bring the image up a little bit more. I'm going to pick up my polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to imagine the square shape of the car, so I'm effectively here looking through it back to the back corner. So we would get a shape like this, wouldn't we? So I can start somewhere around there. I can come down to here something like this and then round the corner maybe straight down the side of the running board and I can see a problem with my cutout. Can you see just behind the front wheel I have left the shadow there from the ground. I have taken the wrong path. Now I didn't know I had done that until I started to do this so isn't it great that I have still got my mask in place and I can put that right in a few moments. But carrying on, I'm just going to take short steps here, click, 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 same principle as what we did with the cutout. I'm just going to take this around the front of the car, curve around this point here, and then of course it would disappear underneath. So let's see how that looks. We don't have to worry about getting this perfect straight away. We do need a soft edge. So we're going to go to the feather command here, and put a nice bit of feather on that, something like that, but that's not set in stone. You can use more or you can use less. 
but I'm going to need to flood that with black. Alt Backspace will do that. Control D will remove the selection. Now whenever I do this I never get it perfect first time. I don't worry too much about that because we can simply go to our free transform tool. It's in the edit menu. Control T is the easier way to apply it. And I can just move it around so I can bring it maybe down the front a little more get it lined up better with the back wheel. I can even move it up, down and around to get just the effect I'm looking for and when I'm happy with that I can hit the tick. Because we've got the shadow on a new layout we also have the opportunity of course to drop down the opacity of that to get just the density that we're really looking for. Sometimes it depends on what you're actually doing you may want it to be quite dark other times you may not. Now let me put right my little mistake here. Let's get rid of these shading areas. I'll just turn them off for the moment and I'll just go back to my car, zoom in, back to my mask I should have said. So I'm going to go back up to 300%, maybe a little more. I've got black, where's my brush, soft edge brush, I was cutting out with something around about 6 or 7, 6 should do it, so click down at that point, move a short distance and click again and again and again. On some straight edges you can actually make quite long steps and of course then the process speeds up quite considerably. And this bit here I won't worry about flooding. I'll just take a few seconds to just paint it out with my brush. Now there are some other things that I've done to the backgrounds of cars I've cut out over the years. One of those is to add a little bit of light tone around the back of the car. I'm not sure we actually need it here but a lot of these things are personal anyway. But to achieve that I would create yet another new blank layer and if I picked up white as my foreground color this time and again my brush this time I'm going to make my brush fairly big but I want this to be very delicate when I'm painting so I'm going to drop my flow rate I've got the little icon checked here so 0, 1 I'm going to take it down to big brush and I'm just going to lighten around the back of the car so I can just lift things a little bit if I want to Something like that is a technique I've used in the past which can look quite effective. Sometimes you can put the colour on much stronger, like we did the shadow, then use your Gaussian blur to blur the shape. Now I'm going to choose not to use that, but I wanted to mention it because it works quite, a, quite well in most instances. So I'll drop that in the bin. But at some stage we would naturally save this as another project, and if you look up, you'll see I've already done that so I've got everything saved and I've got the ability to go back but what I also find is quite useful if we zoom in to one of the edges of the car somewhere you'll notice that the let's get rid of that big circle by picking up the move tool you'll notice the car has got pixels in it of course but the background is very smooth very computer looking I'd like to change that so at some stage we would have to amalgamate these four layers. So I could select all four, right click and choose to merge just those. I've still got my smart object up my sleeve, I've still got my mask. But what I could do here is go to filter and I could add a little bit of texture. I could add noise. Wow, not as much as that. Probably about 3%, maybe even a little less. Let's try 2% just something like that because when I click OK and zoom out at that size you'll hardly notice it but I can see it quite clearly on my background here but there's one option to present our car now I've got both this two layered version and the version before that saved which gives me the confidence to just delete that background layer to try something else and what I've done is created these black and white squares in Photoshop. These are just 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Very easy to do with copy and paste in layers. 
but what I'm going to do is to use my move tool to click drag and drop I can now shut this down drag this beneath the car I'm going to drop the size down a little bit zoom out and there you can see the background I've made it's about the same size of the car maybe a, a little bit more but what I'm going to do is to distort it using edit transform distort I want to bring the center down to somewhere just behind the car like that but I want to give it a feel that it's actually standing on the background here so I'm going to I think I may need to make that a bit smaller I'm going to drag these out to the side to the degree where I think it looks much like I was aiming for at the start and that is what I was trying to get so I'm going to hit the enter key to commit this we can always change this at any time of course because we would save that artwork too but you can see we've got the same sort of perspective as the car perhaps it's a bit high at the back so I may even pick up my transform tool and just drop it down a bit so you've got scope to make changes the other thing I've used quite a bit is skies now if we don't have a sky shot in its entirety I'm sure you'll find a landscape with enough sky that you can use I found one and it's a black and white but that works perfectly for me because it's going to match that background I've just put as a floor now when I open the picture you can see what the picture is but I may not need those cyclists and they may actually get in the way a little bit so I may even try picking up my spot healing brush it may not be necessary to do what I'm suggesting here but it's going to be pretty easy let me just make a smaller brush than that and if I can just paint over these and see if I can get rid of the worst of them that's okay I don't need any more than that I'm just taking away some of the height just in case their heads appear in my picture so now I'm going to do what I did with the checkerboard drag that tab out with the move tool selected click drag and drop I can close this down now I need to position the sky so let's pick up the move tool and I'm looking for something like that in actual fact I probably wouldn't have needed to worry about that but nevertheless some things you may do and that's all you need to do just the spot healing brush so I want to put a mask on here because I want to mask this so that the sky drifts into the checkerboard effect here so let's pick up black as our foreground color the gradient tool same options as before and I'll try to guess too much control Z maybe that's not up far enough that's a little bit better you can see that we don't have maybe maybe in actual fact I went a little bit too low with the floor in hindsight now I wonder if I should have gone much higher well I can just go back and get my checkerboard if I really wanted to and raise it up a little bit higher but given that it's just pure black and pure white I don't think I'm going to do a great deal of damage if I just control T that and just lift it up a little more but I don't want to lift it up too much it's going to look odd with the car now I think I can go up a little bit but not very much and these are, sort, these are the sorts of fine tuning that we often need to do when we're putting together an image like this the other thing of course if we go back to our mask if I flood the mask with white we can make the gradient much tighter and it may be better for the job we're doing here so I could try making a much tighter gradient and I do think I like that a little better but of course we would still perhaps want to do one or two other things such as a new blank layer where we might put a gradient on the bottom let's have a look black as our foreground color gradient all the same options from the top of the screen a little bit of shading at the bottom just helps to hold in that sky and you can make it as dark or as light as you want I think I'm happy with that 
And of course, the other thing which I deleted with my background was the shadow of the car. So we've got to quickly repeat that. Well, that won't be a bad thing to do because that might be quite useful. We'll have a look. You can see much the same as what I did before. It's very quick and easy to do with the polygonal lasso tool. Just click, 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 and you can go around corners with that too. The same principle actually going around these corners as we demonstrated with the brush. Select a mask. The amount of feather is negotiable, but that looks okay to me. We're working on a new blank layer. Flood with black, alt black space. Control D. Edit. Transform. You can go to distort for this if you want, because you could just pull out these edges here to get the sort of effect you're looking for. And when it's nicely in position and you think it looks okay, you can hit the enter key, then adjust the opacity. By the way, to adjust the opacity of a layer, rather than go up here, there is a nice little shortcut. If you hit the M key, followed by the numbers, if I hit 5, for example, I've just dropped my shadow to 50%. If I touch the 8 key, I'm up to 80% and 90%. I think given the background, it probably needs quite a strong shadow, but I'd be happy to live with that. I've got a little bit of a shadow creeping out under the tire that I may want to get rid of over here. Well, Usually we reach for things, or some people would reach for the eraser tool, but I wouldn't do it that way. Just in case I make a cock up of it, or I change my mind, I would even put a mask on there. I would zoom in, pick up black, pick up my brush once again. I would bring my brush down, I would have the flow down really low, and I would just make my adjustments very, very carefully. There is one other thing you may want to consider when you're doing work like this too, is we seem okay at the front. I'm going to make a new blank layer over the top. Let's just call this tires. Sometimes I've found that I just need to add a little bit of shading just where the tire meets the floor. It just makes the cutout and the repasting of the image just that little more believable and the same under the front too. Well, I think you get the idea of what we're trying to achieve. I'm just looking at my picture and my sky. I'm going to select my sky, pick up my burn tool, select shadows from the options at the top of the screen, a 10% exposure, because I think my sky is just a little bit weak over on the right hand side, and I think I would like to give it a little more power there just to balance everything nicely in the image. Now we've got the car on a different background. Can you see that we've got, even though I took all of the blue out in Camera Raw, we do still have a blue edge to the car. And I'm wondering if I can do something with that. And the benefit we have here is we still have our smart object, our raw file, up our sleeve. I'm going to double click to open this up into Canva Raw and I need to zoom in to the top of the car I think so I can see more or less what we saw when it was enlarged a few moments ago. Because what I'm going to... I went too far there. Let's just drop down a bit more. Something like that. What I was going to suggest is I'm going to move my temperature because if I go here I can't do any more with the blues. I don't think the aquas are going to do anything with that. So I'm going to bring my temperature up. But I have to bring it up quite a bit to almost get rid of it completely. And when I do I may be putting too much colour in the car. But it's difficult to see when you're enlarged like this. So control zero. In actual fact, it doesn't look too bad, does it? But we could perhaps then decide to compensate a bit by backing off the vibrance. But personal choices, aren't they? But let's have a look and see if we can see the difference as it pops on screen. And it's much better, isn't it?
Now once again I've saved this as Red Car Project 4 because what I could do is just put it away, come back a little bit later or tomorrow and try something different. Maybe a completely different background entirely. Or maybe we could just choose to change all the white squares in our background to red. Well, if we wanted to do that, perhaps if we selected the magic wand tool and clicked into one of those squares and then went to our select menu and said select all the similar colors there's the color that we've got so all we really need to do now is pick up a red color let's select one from the car and alt backspace control D and there instantly we've got something different so here we have a cutout process that is really superb and this image would print to 30 inches on the long side without any difficulty at all. But we also have a fun project too.